The United States has authorized a multi-billion dollar weapons package for Israel, according to several media reports. It comes as President Joe Biden publicly acknowledged the pain being felt by Arab Americans over the war in Gaza. He has also faced criticism by some in his own Democratic Party. The decision follows a visit by Israeli Defense Minister Yoav Gallant to Washington this week. The new arms package is meant to include 1,800 of the most destructive bombs used in Gaza. The White House declined to comment. Let's talk about this with journalist and Middle East expert Daniel Gerlach. Daniel, the U.S. says it's concerned about Israel's conduct in Gaza. Why then send it 2,000-pound bombs, which are highly destructive, especially in densely populated areas like Gaza? Yeah, that is a contradiction that is being discussed in the American media uh, a lot. Um, Apparently, the Biden administration doesn't see a contradiction here because it says it provides these weapons not to Prime Minister Netanyahu, with whom they have a difficult relationship at the moment and who is like, of course, calling the shots in the Gaza operation, but that they're providing this for Israel's security. I think for the Biden administration, they're in a way in a lose-lose situation because it's uh, support for the Israeli um, military on the one hand, and then it's... um, its uh, opposition to the behavior of the Netanyahu government on the other uh, leads it into a difficult situation, into a quagmire. Netanyahu has 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 successfully lobbied Congress, uh, not only the Republican Party but also the Democrats, for many years, and uh, he's now cashing in on 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 what he had uh, been successfully doing over the last decades. And on the other hand, of course, uh, Joe Biden has uh, opposition inside his own party. Uh, many young Americans, not only Arab Americans, uh, young people in this country, see that. Uh, there is a contradiction in these policies. And if you drive around here in, uh, in, in America, you would probably see at the freeway a billboard which says uh, your taxpayer's money kill, uh, kills children in Gaza. So uh, this is a difficult situation and uh, Biden seems not to be handling it very well. And Joe Biden is also facing criticism for his failure to stop uh, Israel's campaign in Gaza. What leverage does he have with Benjamin Netanyahu, when you say that uh, their their well, relations he, are difficult right now, he he would probably argue that um, uh, America so far succeeded in delaying the Rafah operation because uh, whereas Netanyahu has announced it's going to happen soon and we will do it, uh, and America said please don't do it, please don't do it the way you have done it in Gaza. If you need to operate militarily in Rafah, uh, apply a different tactic, a different strategy protect the, the civilians and provide also a tangible strategy uh, for the day after, uh, Biden would say Netanyahu has not implemented this so far. He has made many announcements and of course the, the war is going on, but he hasn't done the ground operation in, in Rafah to the extent that they have operated in Gaza and Khan Yunus and other places in the Gaza Strip. So he would say that this is our merit. And of course, if you look at the behavior of the United States at the recent uh, United Nations Security Council resolution where they abstained uh, in face of a unanimous vote in, in, in favor of a ceasefire, then you can say, okay, the Americans are applying some pressure on Netanyahu, but Netanyahu is coldly, of course, calculating that he might not be ousted before President Biden is ousted, ousted because he uh, definitely invests in a Republican uh, victory in the next presidential election, and Donald Trump would be his favorite candidate. Daniel, thank you very much for your analysis. Daniel Gerlach there. Uh, joining us from San Francisco, I believe. Is that right? Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Ben. I hope to see you again soon. Jared Feierstein is with the Middle East Institute in Washington, D.C., and is a former U.S. ambassador to Yemen. I asked him how badly he thinks Israel needs these weapons. Well, the uh, the issue, of course, is that some of the weapons uh, that are included are the munitions that are included in the package, uh, according to the press reports, are these 2,000 pound bombs uh, that the uh, that the Israelis have been using in their Gaza campaign. Uh, that allegedly are the source of some of the mass casualty events uh, that we've seen uh, over the course of the past uh, several months. And so uh, the the Israelis are clearly using them, uh, and uh, there are a lot of people who are unhappy about, about the use and will be unhappy that the administration is sending more.
Well, if this is confirmed, uh, this weapons package comes despite the U.S. expressing concern over Israel's conduct in Gaza, as you are citing now, and supporting a ceasefire. How is the White House handling this balancing act? Well, uh, your, your question is exactly right. It, it is a balancing act that the administration is trying to uh, to achieve, uh, where on the one hand they are uh, pressing the Israelis more aggressively uh, to uh, bring down the the level of violence and to and to find ways to to achieve a ceasefire, and yet at the same time they don't want to be in a position where they. Are uh, are not providing Israel with uh, the defense mechanisms or, or or defense equipment that it says it needs. So uh, they are pursuing a course that's probably making both sides unhappy. It's a sensitive political landscape in the United States right now. I don't need to tell you that. How would this affect Joe Biden's popularity during this presidential campaign season? Well, it's uh, he's already suffering, uh, of course, because of the unhappiness with the uh, with the U.S. green light to Israeli military operations in Gaza, uh, and uh, I think that it's going to increase uh, the unhappiness and the pressure on him uh, when uh, when people see that even though the U.S. has supported calls for an immediate ceasefire. We're continuing to provide Israel with more and more weaponry that they need or want to pursue their military operations, particularly uh, in Rafah. Again, uh, Gerald Feierstein with the Middle East Institute speaking to me earlier.